terms with uh, education of the common core. Uh, will the legislature step forward with funding for training and technology to implement the common core standards? So none of us are on the education committee. So. <laughs> Sure, because what it is is the Common Core is a standard that is kind of a, a national, it's actually almost an international standard because one of the things with Common Core that they looked at is, is a lot of the kids that are graduating from college and university that are working in other countries other than just ours. And so as a former educator, I looked at the Common Core and I went through it and I go, well, this is what we used to teach. We used to teach literature and classic literature and how it, it you know, it combines with, with the critical thinking and so on and so forth. But, um, but it's going to be something that's going to be around and talking. But I think it's so my, it was my question. So, so yes. just to clarify, it will be so our kids will be competing against the kids in Mississippi right. who have three more weeks of school, right. plus PPS's computer stone work, and it will all, will all be. And all so when we're talking about the commitment. Thank you, yes. I. Um, from my understanding, um, the reason that we may be losing the equivalent of 4.6 days of instructional time for grade schoolers and high schoolers in Lake Oswego next school year is because that's the amount of time that is going to be devoted in service to implementing the Common Core. And so essentially, it's an unfunded mandate, which in addition to full day kindergarten, which is an honorable thing, but from what I understand, is also not funded and will cost $200 million to implement per year. We are caught between a, a rock and a hard place in terms of good intentions and wherewithal. And, a, and I would hate to see that the outcome be that we end up with less class time for a lot of our kids. So, you know, it's not so much a, a, an answer as a an amplification of the need for us to really think about this in a holistic way. Because you can't take from one pocket without having less than that pocket, you know, even if you put it into the other one. And Audrey Monroe led a school levy effort in Lake Oswego that was really positive. But I think all of us, a lot of good hearted people from all parts of the political spectrum are really struggling with uh, what to do with this situation. One of the issues about Common Core, and I think it's part of what you're asking, is have we really provided the resources for the teachers so that they can be prepared for this? It's an unfunded mandate. I mean, the only portion that I actually see coming for directly is, obviously, is there's an increased cost in testing costs because we'll be converting to the testing process. But one of the things that I often talk to groups about when we have more time is, the largest literally logistical operation that government provides is public education. Now we still say PK through you know higher ed, but the, the actual K through 12, when you think about it, it's about 535,000 students. Uh, for various characteristics of students, we use a formula that increases that number to about 668,000 for kids that are in poverty, or kids that are English language learners, or, or kids that are special needs. Uh, we spent close to just under $10 billion in terms of general fund dollars and local property taxes on school. Plus, in addition to that, we have about 1.4, 1.5 federal dollars to go to the special needs kids. Every need that we have, and that somehow we need to get accustomed to it, it's a pretty large need. I think the representative said 22 million uh, a, a day. That might be a little bit even on the low side when you look at the overall numbers. I used to always use the example that if I wanted to actually say all kids should have these, it's a new book, it's a new textbook. And it's going to cost $100 a year per child. Well, uh, I will tell you, I just spent $120 million to buy it. Uh, because people don't tend to understand the full magnitude of this. 198 school districts, uh, somewhere in close to 2,000 different school districts, uh, many charter schools in addition to that that are publicly funded. Um, and even if these needs were going to go up by modest levels, 
which actually we've sort of divested in public education over the last decade, as we've actually put more money into public safety, some of it warranted, some of it not. And to be quite honest, as we actually in the latter part of this by any last decade, uh, largely due to the recession and the needs of people, but are also due to the authority of public uh, federal funds at one time, uh, unrealistic levels of growth in human services expenditures. And the combination of those two came from one area, education, and that's where we're trying to put dollars back into. But the dollars are not small. I mean, if I said, well, we need to increase public education to hold it from actually losing any more 3% a year, which would be a relatively low figure, I just told you I need 600 million of buy just, just to stay where we are. So if you want to actually increase the investment, I have that today. If you want to actually uh, add more add more teachers, and I think we will actually add back about 1,500 teachers this year in this biennium statewide. But we actually lost, in terms of teachers and school personnel, almost 6,000 over. And for a period of five years, from the beginning of the recession until just this year, finding a teaching position in this state was extremely difficult. And that <coughs> Three people that were hired during that period of time were largely rehired, people that had been laid off from school districts. And at the same time, we were graduating thousands of young people every year from our schools of education, and we had no place for them to go. So if people want to talk about education, one of the things they'll need to talk about is how are you going to fund it, and how are you going to fund it in the long term, not just the short term. Uh, and I think actually there's probably no greater investment that you can make and, uh, in, in terms of public funding and in education at all levels. But I think it's the real challenge that we'll have to face after the next, in the next five years.